uh, somebody says, if only Phil Knight went to Oregon State in talking about the Dan Lanning uh, recruiting success that the Oregon has had so far. Somebody else asking, how much of this is Lanning being a great recruiter versus the money of Oregon and the Nike NIL machine? In other words, would most competent recruiters be having similar success at Oregon? Here's the thing. I, I'm trying to find it now, saying this is the worst radio to say. It's like, I saw this, but I can't tell you who had it. And I did see a ranking last night. I was doing some recruiting stuff and reading about things, and I saw a ranking of NIL spending. Now, Nike, I think, has been very at the I think they've been at the forefront of creativity with some of this stuff, like Kayvon Thibodeau having, you know, uh, his what, what do they call what is the Nike organ collective? Is it is it the dream? Uh, it's like the quack Dream Street. Thank you. They, Dream Street. I'm blanking on it. Dream Street's an interesting thing that they've established with that. The ranking I saw yesterday did not have Oregon in the top six of spending on NIL money. Hmm. Now, it how true, I don't know, but the one I saw, because I was wondering, hey, you know, I know Oregon, NIL, it's it's like, yo, you can offer these kids money now. Great opportunity for them, given their, their booster. I did not see Oregon in the top six of the ranking that I saw. So I, I, I think it's okay to say, like, that helps. I also think, like, Mario Cristobal was there, what, three years ago? Yeah, it wasn't that long. His class wasn't top three. And, you know, landing going into the Big Ten, like, you're recruiting against Ohio State. And I know they haven't had a, a, a season, an entire season yet in that conference, but you are a Big Ten recruiter now, and you have been for some time. You're number one. So, yeah, I, I NIL Collective, you know, that's the thing about this. Uh, how much of it is the coach versus the NIL? Collectives are massive. You, you have to have your S together. But you, it, it, is it not surprising to find that Missouri, like Missouri is landing studs. Are people ready for Missouri to be in a conversation? Because they might be. They had a great year last year. They won their bowl game. And if you go look at some of the portal and recruiting rankings, Missouri shot up. Louisville. Louisville's been in this. Like Louisville. I can't believe I'm saying that. Louisville has their S together. Some of this isn't just about how much money do you have. Texas A&M's got all the money in the world. They went and bought an entire recruiting class. Those kids were gone. Like a year later, they're gone. I think it's about fit, culture, certainly the coaching staff. I mean, I Jabbar Muhammad, this was so shocking to me of like how basic some of this seems. If I told any one of you out there, you're recruiting a high school player or a portal player, wouldn't your natural reaction kind of be cool? I'm going to keep in contact with them as often as I'm permitted. Hey, how's your day? Just want to reach out, man. We really value you. You know, like just a standard help. Jabbar Muhammad was like, I'd never had that before. <laughs> like, what? These younger head coaches that know how to connect with this, you know, current 20, 25 year old generation. Cause now you're seeing kids play till they're 26. So you've got to now, you've got to garner kids from 16 to like 25. Lanning is obviously way better than Mario at that, way better than Willie Taggart was at that. Yes, the money's there, but the money's there for so many other programs. I'm sick of hearing like, well, Oregon's only a good recruiter because of the money guess what all the well, facilities now yeah. are getting close to even you've got to have that personality in there that connects and drink wits and, and, and yeah. missouri's a great example he's, he's like just it. turned 40 yep. and he knows how to connect yep. with young guys lane is doing a really good job at old miss when many people yeah. didn't think lane kiffin you know how is he gonna do he yeah, got fired on a tarmac i think both things are true and i don't i don't think it has to be some like grandiose offensive thing that Oregon fan hears that to say Phil Knight and Nike have been massive. Well, of course. But, but to the, that original text, it is a part of it. Also landing seems to be pretty good. You, you don't have to like Oregon. You can say landing's not going to win a national championship all you want. I think what you would have to admit is you'd love to have him as your recruiting coach. You'd love to have that because, man, does, he's obsessed. We got a cut from Sark. Did we Did we have this on the system, uh, Schultz? Do we have it up here on the board? Yeah, I got it. The Sark one? Okay. This was Steve Sarkeesian. Texas is also in this kind of conversation. They get to the playoff. They lose to Washington. Yes, they've lost some, you know, some top receivers. They've also brought in 
some some killers at that spot to fill those voids. And Quinn Ewers is returning. Here was Steve Sarkeesian, Schultz. If you want to hit this, uh, Steve Sarkeesian yesterday of just where he's at in his life at that program. I came here to win a championship, and then if I can get one, I want to get two. And I, I, I'm borderline obsessed with it at this point. Um, I know what it tasted like last year. I know how close we were, and I couldn't wait to get back. And, and, and hopefully that's what our team really starts to exude is this obsession with being the best because we have a locker room full of young men that are uh, driven, that are focused, that, that want to be the best. I mean, that's that's what it is. Who is the most obsessed? Lanning is sick over this stuff. Eli Drinkwitz is showing sick over this stuff. Sarkeesian. Everybody laughed at Sark. Seven and Sark is Latin for seven and five was our old joke. I liked it. I thought, you know, this guy's learned a lot. He's gone through some trials and tribulations. I liked it. As long as Texas is status, you know, their their elite backers would just stay the hell out of it and give this guy some time to build, he gets to the playoff. I, I, you just, it matters who is doing it does matter. No matter what you do have financially, it matters a great deal. And like, I, I'm, I'm curious to see that battle. Sark landing. Sark just got to the playoff landing. Hasn't been there yet. Landing hasn't beaten his, his, you know, a big rival. He hasn't beaten Washington yet. These are things he, he is moving to try to, to do. And so like now that Saban's gone, yes, Kirby smart still exists. Georgia's still Georgia. But Ryan Day, we saw that, $14 million in IL Collective. They're doing a hell of a job. They just can't beat Michigan. Ryan Day, Brian Kelly at LSU, kind of a down year for them, looking to turn it around. Let's not forget about old Hugh Freeze at Auburn. Now you got Landing and Eugene. We'll see what Jet Fish can do at Washington. Sarkeesian got to a playoff last year at Texas. It's, it's, a, it's a fun world to watch these battles go back and forth with all of these coaches who are just hungry. And I, again, I know Kirby smarts there and he's got two of these, but now that Saban's gone, I think there's some dudes around college football saying, Oh, there's an opening here. There's an opening and we're going to step into that void. And we'll see what Kalen DeBoer can steady the waters and right the ship and keep it going for Bama. But I think there's a lot of coaches in similar nature all across the country saying, the time is now. Let's just go do this. And you see, you're seeing it in Eugene. You're seeing it in, in Columbus. You're seeing it in Austin. All of these coaches jumping on it. Norvell at Florida State. Give him his flowers. You know who's not? <laughs> Dabo. Clemson and Dabo still don't want anything to do with the portal. And I find that a very interesting decision. I, I, I do enjoy watching the younger guys that want to connect with players succeed over the old school, just red ass. I, I'm, I'm sick of the Jimbos. I'm sick of the Dabos of the world. And maybe that's why I like Nick Saban now, because he's like, you know what? I know that I, I've got to hang it up. I just don't. He I, evolved I'm with old. it. He is a red ass, but Nick, Nick oh, Saban evolved, evolved with no, but it. He, he admitted it. about it. Everything Nick Saban did, Schultz, he complained about it, and then he did it and evolved with it. Oregon's running too fast we're gonna get kids hurt like three he years later running up tempo offense uh this portal be careful and i think he was more warning like you you want to allow us this kind of freedom okay don't say i didn't warn you but and the ultimate chameleon had 12 players come to him looking for more nil money and that was like one of the breaking points for yeah. him he's obviously just for sure he's like you know i don't have the energy for this anymore i try i put it all in but it's just not there but when I got guys coming to me asking for money, no, no, it is the young guy that can connect with players now. And I like that. That's going to be more successful as a coach.